know you're carrying a word. What's God saying to you about Europe at this present time? Well, you know, it's been, been too long since I've been over there. I love being able to minister and, and see as God's moving and breathing. And, you know, man, God is, he just amazes me every day with what he does. And just what he's been saying to me and what we've, we've been sharing on the program is stop praying for revival and just be the revival. Absolutely. Like you said, it is, it's a revelation. Revival is a revelation. And you know, I've heard it said for so long, and I used to say the same thing. Well, you can't schedule revival because here in the Bible Belt where we live, you know, you've got the signs on every church that says, you know, revival this week and it's dead as a dead can be. You know, there's no real revival. And, but when you really, like you said, have the revelation of who you are and who God is in you, then it changes the game. And I mm -hmm. think sometimes our perspective of revival is it's incorrect, it's unbiblical, and I believe in Absolutely. corporate revivals, but it's also, you know, we can bring it wherever we go. Re revival is bringing back that which was dead. So there's dead things all around. There's people whose lives are dead, whose spirit is dead, that we can bring into encounter with the living God. And revival can happen, you know, on many different levels. And I believe we're going to see Absolutely. a corporate revival. You know, when I think one thing I really believe that's happening to the church the revival we're going to see in the end time hour because he showed me, he said, I'm releasing a wave of my glory such oh, as God. the world has never seen. And wow. I'm looking for a people who will become my habitation. And mm -hmm. you know, that's what I think, whether it's in the UK here, God's right now, his eyes are going to and fro. He's looking for a people who will become his dwelling place because mm. they'll have that, rev once that happens to you, that everything changes. And, and the world, the revival I believe we're going to see hit the nations of the world is not going to come from where we expect it. It's going to come from where we least expect it. It's those really, people who are hungry and crying out, and the church is going to follow them uh, because we, like you said, we're stuck in our vehicles. We created those vehicles, and we're not getting out, and we're comfortable in those vehicles because we absolutely. made them luxurious, and, and we put everything we'd want in there. But God's got mm. these people who are in these pockets who are crying out, who are desperate, who are willing to do whatever it takes and uh, I believe those are the ones God's going to breathe on, and then the church is going to follow. So that's just what I feel God's showing. Amen. And, and you know what? I, I, I often say to people that this is one of the most amazing things. One of the greatest revivals that ever happened in the Bible was in the Acts 2. Where, you know, Jesus spoke to disciples and said, meet me in the upper room. Yeah. Do you know not all the disciples that he spoke to right. came right. to the upper room? There was 120 that met. And the most amazing thing happened to them because what happened to them was this. They had seen Jesus do miracles. They'd walked with him. They'd talked with him. They'd shared with him. They'd had fellowship with him, personal fellowship. They'd seen him heal the blind, seen him heal the deaf. They'd seen uh, limbs and leprosy and all these kind of things happen. But yet still Jesus said there was something more. There was something think more and he told them to go to the up room and when they got into the up room something amazing happened you know they said the bible says that they heard a sound they heard a sound and they said mm. it was like a mighty rushing wind yeah. they saw something that looked like cloven tongues now this is something that really interests me because those metaphors or similes whatever you may want to call them it's quite interesting that they explained what they had heard by what they knew and it was like a mighty rushing wind and so much of our church is caught in a mindset of we are waiting for a a rushing a mighty rushing wind and it naturally some of our church so much of our church is waiting for the cloven tongues to appear again and i actually believe that what god is doing in this season he's going to do something that this generation is going to say it's like i can imagine if that happened now we would go it sounds like a subsonic jet jet going across the water I can, I can imagine them saying, wow, it looked like laser beams coming from heaven yeah. and going into people's heads. We're using different language, and sometimes we can be caught up in language and, 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 and cultural thinking or historical thinking. But I actually believe that, like you said, God's going to show up where we don't expect it because God's got to show up beyond our imagination. Yeah. And I believe one of the most ama amazing things about God showing up, it's not uh, the, the upper room could be disputed. I went to Israel and I went to the upper room and I said, is this the actual upper room? And the guy goes, well, no, it's one like it. And I thought, where is the actual upper room? And he goes, it was somewhere around here. But it could be disputed by, by historians or by people today. But one thing that can't be disputed when they left that room, they left with a power. They left with a power that changed the world. I call it the tsunami power. Yeah. And what's amazing about the tsunami, it's going on even now. 
thousands of people getting saved today, thousands of people experiencing the tsunami. I believe that there is a visitation from heaven in this season, Ben, yeah. that is going to actually blow our minds. We are going to find it difficult to describe what God is doing. Amen. Because we are, but we are going to see the fruit of it. We're going to see thousands added to the body of Christ. We won't have churches that can fit them. We won't have stadiums because it means this, that when the world gets moved by the presence of God, it's not about church, but it's about encountering the true and living God through Jesus. Yes. So I, I feel this is happening all across the world. I feel it in the worship that's happening here in the UK. We are seeing just incredible things. The church is beginning to rise up. The, the church is beginning to take ownership of many, many things. And all these things are sparks of what the revival may look like. But I'm careful not to put something on it. I'm careful not to say it's going to be like Azusa Street yeah. or it's going to be like the Welsh Revival. I believe that through us, Ben, through people who are hearing the voice of God in this season, who are hearing the call of heaven in this season and responding, we are going to see the miraculous, the supernatural release once again like never before. Yeah. I Man. can't wait. It's happening. You know, I can feel it. <laughs> I can just feel my spirit just stirring up within me. And man, I'm so excited about what God's doing. And, you know, I know he's doing great things through you. And you've got the renewal, the, the worship movement. Tell me, what, what's God doing through that? Well, we, we, basically, God really just spoke to me and said, no, you, 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 this revival that's coming, it has to, there has to be facets of it um, that need to be, um, people need to hear about it. And one of the things that, that God said to me was the worship was going to change. Every time there's a visitation of God in the earth, and we've seen that through many revival movements, uh, where we see Reformation, we see Reformation in the in, in the 16th and 14th century, and even in the, the, the last century, the beginning of the last century, Azusa Street, the worship changes. We are seeing songs being birthed. We're seeing um, revelation changing in the lives of worshippers. And I really felt that worship leaders were one of the one of the places where the presence of God um, needed to change first. So I decided to call worship leaders together, and I called some of the major worship leaders from around this nation uh, to come together uh, where we would, we would seek to encounter the God, no other agenda, but to seek, just to seek his presence and just to worship him. And, and what we found, we, we invited Tim Hughes, Ben Cantlin, and the guys from HTB Worship Central. We had some of the guys from the, the, the African church movement that's here. We had guys from the Portuguese speaking church that's here. We had the guys from the Spanish speaking church. We had the guys from the Tamil, the Asian speaking church. We had all these different people from different diasporas, different nations who live in this nation gather under one place. We had some 4,000 people come together. And what we experienced was something so intense when God visited us and we saw the different expressions of culture. But more importantly, people left that place, not coming to a conference, but I believe changed from the inside out. So we're actually traveling around the country and it's almost like we call it kingdom worship movement because we're preparing, we're preparing the kingdom of God for a new move of God. Yeah. So a new move of God needs a new revelation. And the cry is, Lord, renew our minds so we can see it. Yeah. Lord, renew our thinking so we can perceive it. You know, Isaiah 43 says, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Mm -hmm. Watch it come to pass. Will you not see it? Will you not perceive it? Yeah. And I believe in this season, we're, we're seeing people raise up to that place where we're declaring over our cities that this city belongs to the Lord. We're declaring over our towns and our villages that this place belongs to our Lord, that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. So we're just, that's what I'm doing. And we're yeah. doing it through music. Uh, we're doing it through music and training. We're doing it through just laying off hands, impartation. So it's an exciting time, yeah. you know. Amen. Yeah, it's not, we don't need a revolution. We need a reformation. We need to be Absolutely. reformed. We need to have our mind renewed so that we can go and prove what is the good, the perfect and acceptable will of God. And man, I'm excited. I'm excited oh. talking to you. It gets me fired up. 